Hi everyone and welcome. This is going to be week eight, which is Beyond SQL. So far we have been talking a lot about SQL and relational databases, but this week we are going to start our journey into what is Beyond SQL and other options other than relational databases. So SQL is a really popular option and it's one of the ones that you're going to see a lot if you end up working with databases. Some of the pros of SQL are that it's been very popular for a really long time. So there's actually a lot of experience with people using it. That means that there's some decent documentation. It's already been sort of implemented and kind of stress tested a lot. So it's already in use in a lot of companies. It's relatively simple for people to learn, even if you aren't a programmer. There are some built-in security and data integrity features, and there's quite a few different options for abstraction. Now, SQL also has some cons. One of the big ones is that it requires structured data. Um, having structured data as a requirement means that there are some limits that weren't an issue, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago when we weren't talking about the same volume of data or the types of data that we actually end up having now. There are some hidden rules that SQL uses that you might not necessarily even realize are happening in the background, but can actually turn into a problem. You can't do real-time analytics. So real-time data processing is becoming more and more relevant, especially with the size of the data sets that we're talking about. And not having the ability to handle real-time data processing can be a problem. Large data sets can lead to longer processing times because of the way queries are structured and how they are put together you can end up having queries that will take a surprising amount of time to actually be implemented. Um, setup of SQL databases can be complicated. They may need specific skill sets and you may end up needing somebody who actually specializes in SQL. Now, um, for the larger data sets and longer processing times, you might not have necessarily seen some of these downsides yet if you're looking at a lot of the samples or tutorials or things like that. The lack of real-time analytics, the requiring structured data, and longer processing times may not come up because the data sets that you're working with are so small, it's not really a problem yet. But once you start getting into some of the more real world data sets, that's where it starts turning into a big problem. So then we can start looking at beyond SQL. So NoSQL is non-relational database model, literally non-SQL or not only SQL, kind of depending on who you ask. NoSQL is used for larger data sets, real-time analytics. Those are some of the times where you'll see it being used very heavily. There's a lot of different ways that you can organize NoSQL databases, um, by which I mean, because there are so many different kinds of NoSQL databases, because it's literally, are you SQL? No, then you're NoSQL. Um, we can sort of categorize them and organize them in a lot of different ways. One of the ways that you'll sometimes see them being organized is by data model. So how the data is actually being stored is one of the common ways that we might break down the different types of NoSQL databases because if we know that we need a specific data storage model, that will narrow down the types of databases that we need to go to. Because um, you might be thinking like, oh, well, there's only one or two that I need to worry about. Like, no, no. There are so many out there in the world that you have to worry about that you need to find some way of narrowing it down. Um, because the data is not done in a way that shows relationships, schemas are also done differently. So when we had talked about schemas previously, it was a way of being able to see how the data is organized and illustrate the relationships between the tables that contain the data. But once we take out relationships and we take out tables, the schemas that we were talking about don't make sense anymore.
Another thing that makes NoSQL different is it tends to not use joins. So all of the time that we spent talking about the different types of table joins, because there aren't relational tables, we don't have table joins, like literally not a thing. Um, so NoSQL tends to use multiple queries instead. So NoSQL, which again is just literally, are you SQL? If yes, great, you're SQL. Otherwise, you're not. Um, scalability. So scalability is the ability to have the thing that you're working with work with larger amounts of data, uh, larger data sets, sort of more. And the amount of more that we're talking about is the scalability here. Um, NoSQL can also store data outside of the traditional SQL options. So it's not just relegating our data to tables. If our data doesn't fit in tables, that's fine. NoSQL also allows real-time analytics and less maintenance in general. This is not a, you know, 100% of the time, but in general, there's less maintenance. There are some cons to NoSQL. Um, NoSQL hasn't been popular as long as SQL, so there's a lot less stress testing that's been done on it. Um, less complex queries are done, so um, usually there's multiple queries instead of table joins. Uh, this can be a con because now you have to worry about multiple queries and getting multiple queries right. Additional infrastructure may be needed. So there's different types of scaling that we can do, horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. And we may end up needing to add more infrastructure to the place that we're storing our data to be able to work with it. Um, NoSQL can also be difficult to change the data once it's been added. Um, normally once it's sort of in there, it's in there. Whereas with NoSQL, you could be changing and updating it a little bit more frequently. So SQL is relational. NoSQL is not relational. SQL has schemas that are pre-designed. NoSQL has schemas that are dynamic and it can handle unstructured data. SQL is what's considered vertically scalable. So you can add more power, such as upgrading the servers that hold your database. So like if you have a server that's holding your database, you could add, um, you know, more CPU power or more RAM or something. Whereas NoSQL is horizontally scalable. We can add more nodes. So we can actually add more servers rather than adding RAM to the servers we have. We can just be like, um, I need a little bit more power, add on some more servers. SQL is based off of tables and we've seen the relationships between the tables. NoSQL is data structures that aren't tables. SQL has to have structured data. That's part of the way that it's put together and designed. NoSQL can work with unstructured or even semi-structured data. So you can see where we may end up wanting to choose one or the other, depending on the type of data that we're working with, the size of the data that we're working with, and what we actually need to do with it. NoSQL has several different types. So um, the different ways that we can classify NoSQL databases can potentially overlap. A really common way to classify is data structure. So that's how the data is being stored. Some really common data structures are graph, key value, and document. However, and this is important, the vocab that is used may be different than what you're expecting. If you're coming from programming or a programming background, you may not see vocab that you recognize or the vocabulary might be done in a different way. So it's important that you make sure that you are sort of matching your vocab to the thing that you're looking for or looking at. So like if you are struggling to Google something, make sure that you add, you know, data structure no SQL so that you are actually getting the right thing because it can just be kind of confusing. So an example. NoSQL uses um, a popular one is called a key value store. 
This will use an associative array or a dictionary. So if you're coming from programming, that's the data structure that you would end up seeing for the vocabulary. This particular type of NoSQL uses key value pairs. So each key has a value. The unique key is how you can get your data. The data can be very simple or complex. You can kind of think of it like a relational database, but it really only has the two columns, the key column and the value column. And you can see based off of this image, you can kind of see the almost table with the keys and the values and have it broken up by column. But the way that you want to think about key value stores is every key has a value that it points to. Another example of NoSQL is called a document store. So instead of using tables with rows and columns, it's just a document. The document can be closer to a data object, so there may be less modifications needed to retrieve the data. So you can see, for example, if we have SQL rows of ID, name, and age, whereas we might see that in tables and rows in a SQL style database. The no SQL style document will instead have the ID, the name, and the age all together in a single document. These documents can be organized in different ways, such as a collection. Collections are a group of documents with similar contents. You could also do things like tags or metadata to organize the document. So for example, we could say, well, this NoSQL document has an ID, a name, and an age. So this is going to be the category of customers. And then we could have this collection that's all of the customers that we have for our store. A flexible schema is used here. The documents don't need to have the same schema. Document creation is really easy, so there isn't really a lot of maintenance required, and no foreign keys are needed because there is not necessarily a relationship between documents. We may end up have documents that have no relationship to each other whatsoever, um, but the collection is just a group of documents with similar contents, not necessarily that they are related to each other in any way. Okay, then we have graph databases. This is sort of the third one that you'll probably see a lot. This is for data that has relationships, but the relationship needs a graph, so such as a network topology or social connections. So if you are trying to say like how people are connected in a social way, like, oh, I know this person from work, I know this person from the gym, I know this person from my favorite restaurant, those types of connections would probably not necessarily be shown well in a table, whereas they could be shown well in a graph. So the focus is on the relationship between the elements. The nodes on the graph can be connected by links. So we can have a person that we'll label as, you know, a person. And we can then say that that person works here, is married to this other person, and lives in this city. And we can have all different kinds of relationships illustrated um, as we actually have this graph because all of these different nodes can have all kinds of different values and all kinds of different data stores. The query can have real-time results. So if we're trying to look at, you know, social relationships, we can actually have real-time results for this output. The quickness of the results will depend on the number of connections. So the more people that you're connected to, the longer it'll take. Adding data is really easy because we can add new nodes or new edges and the schema doesn't really change. So, you know, if um, we were looking at this example here where we have two people that are married and live in Connecticut and work in Connecticut, but just in a different city. And we instead needed to add another works in, and it turns out it's actually New York. It would be really easy to add another node for New York and then add in another connection saying they work in New York. So adding that extra data is actually really easy and we don't have to worry as much about the schema being changed. 
So those are some examples of NoSQL databases that you might see and sort of how they're structured and how they differ from SQL that we've been talking about so far. I hope this was helpful and I hope you're all having a lovely day.